industry inside a nutshell. The show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. So this is a very special video and although Britannic month has been and gone, I decided to sneak in one video particularly for two reasons. One, because of my followers and friends who are huge fans of the Britannic and yes, Britannic does get discussed about in my Discord server a lot. So that's the first reason. And the second reason is because it is a very special anniversary. And no, it's not Titanic's, but it's Britannic's. But we're going to get to that story in a second. And I want to give a massive shout out and thank you to Leo for narrating this video. And of course, with his improv and his wonderful narration, I really couldn't have done this without his support. So Leo, thank you so much. And if you want to stick around, Leo's got a very special surprise, though I'm not going to say anything because I'll let him tell you guys. So until then, I will leave you in Leo's good hands and happy Britannic month or happy closing for Britannic month. On the 1st of September of 1985, a French-American expedition team led by Jean-Louis Michel and Robert Ballot discovered the wreck of the RMS Titanic about 73 years after the ocean liner had sank. The Titanic was discovered lying at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 400 nautical miles from Newfoundland, Canada. Today, she lies some 13,000 feet underwater. However, ten years and three months earlier, the Titanic's younger sister ship, the HMHS Britannic, was discovered lying at a depth of about 125 meters in the Aegean Sea. The younger sister was found 59 years after she sank while working in military service as a hospital ship during World War I. Now, with the Britannic capturing the hearts and minds of several people, ocean liner enthusiasts have been asking questions on social media, Many of these questions include how was she discovered and what is the condition of her wreck compared to her older sister Titanic. Well, all the answers lie on their starboard sides in this video, much like Britannic's wreck, but we'll get to that. The wreck of the HMHS Britannic was discovered at a depth of 125 meters in the Aegean Sea, only 4 miles off the island of Kia in Greece. She was discovered on the 3rd of December 1975 during the filming of a documentary called Calypso's Search for the Britannic. The wreck had been discovered by explorer Jacques Cousteau. Now, Cousteau was infamous for his extensive undersea investigations and for co-inventing the first fully automatic compressed air aqua lung. By 1975, he would directed a documentary series for public television. He had written various books, and he founded the French Oceanographic Campaigns, or FOC for short. During the time of the discovery, Cousteau was invited by the Greek Ministry of Tourism as the government department wanted a team of explorers and divers to search for possible underwater remains of a very mythical city, known as Atlantis. Yes, that Atlantis is the one in question which it was at the time believed to be underneath the waters of the Aegean Sea. However, while preparations were in full swing to search for Atlantis, Cousteau came into contact with the Titanic Historical Society, which suggested to him to also look for the wreck of the Britannic. Favoring this idea, Cousteau made plans to arrange for an expedition into the Kia Channel with a team of divers, film crew, specialists, and historians to search for the wreck along with Cousteau's famous ship, the Calypso. The expedition began in November of 1975. As well as carrying the crew, the Calypso had also carried a side-scan sonar that had recently been developed by Dr. Harold Engerton of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. When the search began, the team attempted to find the wreck by focusing on the coordinates that were given by the British Admiralty when it confirmed the position of the wreck in 1960. However, this was changed following a previous position which was recorded in 1947. And as we know, most coordinates that date back to the early and mid-20th century aren't uh, exactly the most accurate. 
and the Britannic was no exception whatsoever. And with the coordinates out of the window, the search had to be wide. Now, on the 3rd of December, which would later become my birthday, the wreck was discovered by the team. She was discovered on the ocean floor, lying on her starboard side at a depth of about 390 feet, or somewhere between 119 to 125 meters, and compared to her older sister Titanic, the Britannic was actually in very good condition. The reason for this was because the warm water temperatures in the Aegean Sea and the depth she had actually come to rest at, and the surface above the ocean, uh, were, yeah. All major factors. She lies intact apart from structural damage at the bow section. It's actually believed that the damaged area is where the mine had struck the ship before she sank. In the summer of 1976, Cousteau and his team returned to the site along with the president of the Titanic Historical Society, William Tantum IV, uh, and a Britannic survivor named Sheila Macbeth Mc Mitchell. Um, I'm sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> An attempt was made to dive into the wreck, but diving down underwater is actually extremely risky. When it comes to diving down to shipwrecks, divers have to rely on a breathing apparatus instead of uh, submersibles, and each dive was limited to only 15 minutes, followed by a 3 hour decompression. With this in mind, instructions were given to divers to go down to the wreck as fast as possible to take images and to return making decompression stops at fixed depths. On the 10th of July, the first dive to the wreck had begun. However, problems started almost immediately when light bulbs started exploding underwater. Despite this, uh, and the fact there was nothing left to document the ship, the mission continued. Divers did manage to explore the enclosed promenade deck, though one casualty was when diver Robert Polio, that's an unfortunate name, experienced the effects of narcosis, or losing consciousness, and immediately he descended down deeper into the surface. By some miracle, he actually survived. Following the disaster of the July expedition, a second one took place on the 21st of se 24th of September. I mixed up dates with the anniversary of her sinking, god help me. Ah. <laughs> ah. Uh. Uh. And uh, another expedition, anyway, took place during the 10th of October. During one dive, the 67-year-old Cousteau dived down to the wreck and explored inside the forward Grand Staircase area. He and his team actually succeeded in capturing footage of this ship with uh, one picture taken of the last dome. He also took another dive inside a submersible called the Soak Hoop to explore the Britannic's debris field. Within the field, he managed to find one of Britannic's funnels, remains of the hospital beds, and part of her keel. In another dive, Britannic survivor Shayla Macbeth Michelle dove into the wreck inside a submersible. However, she was much more interested in the wildlife rather than the wreck itself. To this day, she is actually the oldest person who has ever dove underwater to see a shipwreck. At some point, artifacts would also be recovered from the debris field, including an anchor chain, a large piece of coal, and the base of an engine room telegraph. However, there have been lost records of where the artifacts actually ended up. Many people believe they were transferred to museums in Athens and Monaco, though there's no actual evidence to prove this, so we might never truly know where they went. <laughs> Today, the wreck is still intact, and while Titanic's wreck is disappearing because of sea currents and the sea life consuming hundreds of pounds of her iron, Britannic's wreck is actually in much better condition. This is due to the bacteria on her hull having more competition because of other sea life, and they're actually protecting the wreck as a result, and it's being turned into a man-made reef, if you can consider her that. The depths and temperatures we touched on earlier are, of course, another critical reason. And since then, Britannic was ex well has been explored many times, including the recent 2023 expedition led by diver Richie Kohler. 
However, due to the wreck status as a war grave, she is protected under specific Greek laws and UNESCO guidelines that allow visits, but only if they are licensed by the Ephorate of Underwater Antiquities. If anyone were to break this law, the sentence for diving into the wreck without a license or permission from the Greek government, uh, well, let's just say that would lead to imprisonment for 15 years. You don't want that, do you? <laughs> this also includes experienced divers. <laughs> However, there are rumors that there could be plans for the Britannic to be turned into an underwater museum. It's not confirmed to be true, uh, but it was touched on, I think, in the end credits of the 2000 Britannic movie. Funny enough. For now, she will just remain at the bottom of the sea, hopefully in peace. In the future, we hope that the Britannic will actually get the full recognition she deserves, much like her two sisters, Titanic and Olympic. This includes a memorial plaque petition where many ocean liner enthusiasts, myself included, are hoping for a plaque to be placed in the Titanic Memorial Garden behind the Titanic Belfast Museum. We still have a long way to go, but we desperately need your help to complete this task. A link to the petition will be in the description box below. Now, special little note from the actual channel owner here at the bottom. For those of you who have already uh, signed the petition, uh, thank you very much for your support. You are all superstars. If you haven't, please sign and spread the word, of course. I actually remember being there when we uh, made the petition, I might add. And yes, I do turn 21 on the anniversary of Britannic's wreck being found, which will also be when this video is uploaded. <laughs> so by the time you're seeing this, I'll be 21, though at the time of recording, I am only 20. Just a fun little fact about your narrator. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe for future videos. Until next time, this has been History Inside a Nutshell, departing from the dogs. Thank you so much for all of your support and enjoy the rest of your voyage.